In March of 2002, a ranger and big cat researcher by the name of Sergei Sokolov, along with his partner, were wandering the forests of Primoria, hoping to collect samples of the Amur leopard, when they stumbled upon some tiger tracks. From the size, they could tell it was probably a female tiger. They decided to follow the tracks, but in reverse, seeing where the tigress had been, rather than following where she was going. After all, as per the rules, both men were unarmed. Doubtlessly, many may think it is unsafe to be in the taiga forest of Primoria without a weapon, and there is a good argument to be made as to why, but actually, it seems like a lot of tiger attacks happen on people who are armed. In The Amor Tiger by Yuri Dunashenko and Alexander Kulikov, it states, with rare exception, all tiger attacks on people have taken place when the latter has been armed. One possible explanation they offer is that possibly an armed person is exceedingly bold and is less vigilant. There are some occasions when unarmed people have been attacked, and this was one of them. Despite moving away from the tigress, a booming roar split the air. and the men realized a tiger was very close by. It wasn't the female though, but a male. He had been following the female when he came across the men. As John Valence states in his book, when the tiger spotted Sokolov, it may have perceived him as a competitor, a threat, or simply an obstacle. The tiger roared a second time. There are about 40 yards between Sokolov and the angry tiger, but for a tiger, 40 yards is barely anything at all. The big cat moved so fast, Sokolov didn't even see the final leap. But in an instant, the tiger was on top of him, biting into his leg multiple times and shaking him in his mouth. Sokolov could feel his bones being crushed in the jaws of the tiger and did the only thing he could. He fought back. Making a fist, he punched the tiger as hard as he could in the head. The tiger roared and bounded off into the forest perhaps realizing there was no reason to kill Sokolov. Sokolov's partner, Vladimir, ran over to him. It wasn't good. His leg was badly injured and bleeding. Neither man had any radio, and they were far from the nearest town and road. Vladimir used a tourniquet on the upper leg, and as gently as he could, he got him into a sleeping bag. He gave him the only food he had, some chocolate. Then he built a fire, and then, he ran to get help. When it comes to the far east of Russia, I think many of us imagine the expansive taiga forest and remote villages and cabins dotted around it. And you'd be right, but we have some cities. Unlike most of the larger cities in the world, the city of Vladivostok lies on the coast of Russia's far east, looking out onto the Sea of Japan. Though the area has been inhabited by indigenous people for thousands of years, the Russians first established a settlement there in 1860, and it was established as a city by 1880. Today, the city has a population of about 600,000 residents, and the city resembles San Francisco, not just because of its general landscape, but also, after a visit to California in 1959, Nikita Khrushchev ordered the city be made into their San Francisco. In a city like this, one might feel somewhat separated from nature, from the taiga, and the predators that live there. But even on the outskirts of the city, an encounter with a tiger is low, but not zero. If we go back to the 1950s, we have accounts of a tiger that put fear into the people of Vladivostok when it started appearing around a train station. While the people may have felt that they could be attacked at any time, it was other inhabitants that were the victims of the tiger. A dog in the area was taken. Dogs and tigers really don't mix well. And later, the same tiger attacked a colt, injuring it badly. While there doesn't seem to be an instant where that tiger attacked a human, that would change in the decades to come. Often farmers run into conflict with wild animals. As farmlands expand, they cut into forests, and they invariably cut into tiger territory. When this happens, tigers will usually retreat away from humans. But on occasion, big predators can't resist the allure of livestock, an easy meal in a difficult environment, and the temptation can draw them back into their former range. 
and into contact with humans. In 1976, there had been almost 50 years without an unprovoked attack on humans, but perhaps the pressure on the tiger's prey and the expanding human settlements became too much. In a village named Lazo, about 100 miles or 160 kilometers away from Vladivostok, a tractor driver was attacked and then partially eaten by a tiger. As far as I can tell, there were no other tiger attacks that year, or for a few years later. Perhaps the tiger had not really become a true man-eater and returned to the forest to go back to eating things like boar and deer. Or maybe it just happened to be shot by a poacher. Well, a tiger wandering the outskirts of a smaller village isn't too extraordinary. A tiger wandering the streets of downtown Vladivostok certainly is. In 1986, a senior engineer from the Dalperbor factory spotted something very odd in the snow. Animal tracks. Big ones. He followed them and discovered a disturbing sight. A dog lying there half eaten. Specialists were called in and they examined and measured the tracks and it was confirmed they were tiger tracks. A fact that must have been pretty shocking for the people of the city, as it is stated in the Washington Post, for the first time in a hundred years, a wild Amur tiger was prowling the streets of the biggest city in the Soviet Far East. A team was quickly set up to hunt the tiger and a helicopter took to the air to track it down. All roads in and out of Vladivostok were closed down as stealthy as a tiger can be, it didn't take long for them to find the big cat. He was found in the evening near a trolley bus stop. As the team approached him, the tiger jumped out and was shot. According to the Washington Post, the tiger was nearly 10 feet long, 3 meters, and weighed about 440 pounds or 200 kilos. There was also another incident around that time where a tiger attacked a hunter who went out to check his traps. I found it difficult to find many details on this story, but there are two things of note. Firstly, the man had only an axe, which wouldn't exactly turn the tide if a tiger was hell-bent on killing you. But the second piece of information is, he had his dog with him, and this dog was able to turn the tide. As while the tiger attacked the man, the dog bit the tiger on the tail, and it was hard enough that the tiger released the man and retreated back into the forest. Not many people survive an attack from an Amur tiger. Speaking of... Back at the forest, Sokolov had smoked the entire pack of cigarettes Vladimir had given him in less than half an hour. He lay there in agony as the fire and the sun were starting to go down. He waited in the snow for help to come. Vladimir had left hours ago, but the research base was 10 miles away. Sokolov badly just wanted to pass out so he wouldn't have to experience the incredible pain but he wasn't able to. It was getting cold and the snow around him was beginning to freeze. He was still bleeding and growing concerned that the tigers might return in the dark. By 3 a.m., he thought that no one was coming. The 1980s don't seem to have any human fatalities caused by tigers in Eastern Russia, or at least there aren't highly publicized accounts. The 90s, however, proved to be a more lethal time. In 95, a trapper went out to check his sable traps, never returned, and when a search was launched to find the man, all that was left of him was his legs, with tiger tracks all around. In January of 1996, a woman was waiting for a train in a rural train station by the town of Patisanask. The town is about 100 kilometers or 62 miles from Vladivostok. Before the train arrived, a tiger came. It attacked the woman, but thankfully she wasn't alone. Her husband was there, but all he had as a weapon was a flashlight, but that didn't stop him. He charged into the tiger and struck it with the flashlight. The tiger stopped attacking the woman and turned his attention to the man. In some of these encounters, a single strike to a tiger is enough to make it leave, as if bringing the animal back to its senses. However, that didn't happen this time. The tiger killed the man, but at least his wife survived. There were a few more attacks in 1997, including the attacks outside of Sobolinya. I made a video going into a lot of detail of those attacks on the YouTube channel, so I recommend checking that out after this video if you haven't seen it yet. While Sokolov was bleeding and freezing in the snow, his partner Vladimir had made it to the first town, but according to the author John Valent, no one was willing to help. Perhaps they didn't trust a man appearing in the town in the middle of the night or perhaps they thought it was too dangerous to go out there. Regardless, he had to get help from someone, so he went all the way back to the base. 
By that time, it was 5 a.m., and he didn't even know if his friend was still alive. When he got to the base, he rounded up some of the men. They took a tractor with a wagon attached and drove it out towards Sokolov. Tractors aren't particularly fast, and by the time they made it to him, it was 9 a.m. When Sokolov saw the men, he told them he needed to be taken out by helicopter, or he would die. He was running on borrowed time already. They had a radio and were able to call for a helicopter, but there was a problem. Bills from previous rescue flights hadn't been paid, and even though Sokolov had somehow survived a tiger attack and a night in the taiga forest, the aviation authority would not fly. Going into the taiga comes with an element of risk, and some never return. In 2010, a husband and father went out on a fishing trip, and he never came back. The family raised the alarm, and after police searched for the man, he was found dead by a river, killed by a tiger. The police gathered some local hunters and went searching for the tiger, but the tiger found them. The big cat attacked a patrol car one morning and was shot dead. On Vostok Media News, when speculating about why this particular tiger was so aggressive, they stated, the animal had allegedly been injured in a fight with other animals, such as a tiger, bear, or wild boar. We do not rule out that the animal had been suffering from a disease. Now, there has also been some more attacks in more recent times. There's a news story from 2023, when a husband and wife were driving their truck through the forest. They pulled over so that the wife, Daria, could go to the bathroom. She went into the forest and relieved herself by a bush. And you already know what happened next. A tiger happened. Leaping onto Daria, it started mauling her. Her husband had seen the tiger coming, but he didn't have any weapon, not even a flashlight. But he did have a truck, and he drove the vehicle straight into the animal. The tiger, somehow surviving the hit, returned to the forest. Daria had to go to the hospital, but she survived. Also in 2023, there were many reports of tigers being spotted near villages and unfortunately killing dogs. When a 76-year-old man lost his dog to a tiger, he decided to take matters into his own hands and tried to track the tiger down to kill it. But tracking the tiger down in its own territory isn't always a good idea, and the tiger killed the man first. Sokolov was slipping in and out of consciousness. The men were making as many calls as they could, trying to figure out a way to get the helicopter to come. Eventually, they were able to contact American tiger biologist Dale McCall, and he agreed to pay for the chopper. When it finally arrived, it was unable to land, due to all the tree cover, so Sokolov had to be dragged up in a basket. By the time he got to the hospital, the doctor gave him hours to live. Considering the injuries, the doctors also thought he'd have to lose the leg. Or, initially, they did. But Sokolov's friends found doctors who were willing to try and save the leg. He was on an IV for months, but he was alive. And after many operations and three years of rehabilitation, he was able to walk on his leg again. Now, his leg would never be the same, and he couldn't really walk quite as well, but he could move around. And after a time, he went back into the taiga. There are a few more attacks I didn't go into, and there is also this other video that I'd recommend called The Siberian Tiger Massacre of the 1920s. I'll put the link below if you want to check it out. I would like to emphasize that while I did just list a bunch of attacks, they did take place over nearly 70 years. Many, many more and more tigers have been killed by humans in that time, and we have a much worse effect on them than they have on us. We can learn some interesting things from these attacks though, I think. On some occasions, tigers will retreat if the person or person close by attacks them, though not always. And it also seems that the only people who survived an attack did so as they were not alone. As always, thanks for watching. Hope you have a great day. This video was previously exclusive to patrons and YouTube members. If you want access to more bonus content like this, as well as the ability to vote on future videos and more, consider joining the Patreon or becoming a YouTube member. Don't worry though, all the regular uploads will remain completely free. This is just bonus content as a thank you to the dedicated supporters.